Hello, dear. This is Franz Cantor here, talking at you. Um, cartoonist, illustrator, tune talker, etc., etc., teacher, Tinker Tailor Spy. And sometimes caricatures. And that voice is the voice of destiny. Tink- no, the voice of. What lurks in the hearts of men. Yes. Only the shadow knows. Exactly. Uh, it's Jim Bridges, and we're here downtown Docklands. Downtown. Downtown Doc, Docklands at yeah. the Cartoonist Museum. And I think we're going to open up uh, over the weekend. So are there's we? some news, yes. We'll I be open we up the see. weekend. Right. Well, that's a whole different can of worms. Yes. And um, Who are we doing today? Well, we're going to do this guy. Mr Sheen. No, it's not Mr, Mr. Sheen. Mr. Sheen. You might think it's Mr Sheen because it's quite uh, ovoid in shape. and um, Ovoid? Ovoid. Actually, it wasn't Ovoid a, 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 a Greek <laughs> writer? <Yeah. laughs> Ovoid Rex. It's kind of like a guitar, inverted guitar shape. Here we're, we're kind of looking for Hang on. It. While you're insulting the guy, you nice. better actually sh- tell who it is. Okay, well, it's Mark Knight. Yes. Mark Knight is a uh, cartoonist for, guess what? The Herald Sun. And uh, he, how long has he been working in the Herald Sun? Long Whoa. time. Oh, that's 30 a, years? Well, he was working for the Herald before they joined. Mm. I don't know. That, you've Your got impression the of the Herald, of course, is different than mine because I come from Sydney where the Herald's o- o- operated by the opposition. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I don't know, 20 years? 20 years? 20 years, I don't know. Yeah. Been there a long time. Yeah. And I love Mark's uh, sense of humour. He's got a very um, keen sense of um, the moment. He loves uh, pop culture references and he also loves history and uh, uh, loves to refer to them. So it's kind of but like he does have very rewarding. He does have drawbacks. Does he? Yeah. He, he draws backs a lot. No, he draws, oh, sorry, he, he barracks for the Sydney Swans. Right, okay. Which is, a big, dra- which is a big drawback. Me. Is it? Okay, well, so no one who likes do you Sydney. Barrack for? Who do you barrack for? Well, if I come from Sydney, what, does that mean that I have to barrack for the Sydney Swans? Uh, apparently, this is Australia, mate. Is it so you can barrack for anyone? Uh, yes, well, you know. <laughs> Do they have a you football got a team for, in Tasmania? Hang on, you got to barrack for someone, all right? Penguins. There you go, Tassie Penguins. Yeah, okay. Um, if Do they have a team? They probably don't. They'd love to play, but the VFL won't let them. The AFL won't let them. Because it's an oh, island. It's, it's not part of no, Australia. No, no, it's money. It's secede, secede from the union. It's always money. You have to secede. Um, will you stop... Um, Go your own don't, way. Don't knock Tasmania, all right? My sister lives in Tasmania. You'll don't knock it, all right? I, I mean, you know... Um, um, I've done a... I've actually gone a little bit further than a quick trans. You, you made him look like Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, He's no, gone from Mr you. Sheen to Mr Murdoch. Mm. Well, that's a horse of a different colour. You can say that again. <laughs> I got in trouble once for draw- drawing Rupert. I took out, wasn't for there, was when I was working at uh, News Limited. Uh, it wasn't for a News Limited publication. And um, apparently I got called at, uh, well, I, not apparently, I did. I got called at 11 o'clock at night that night because I borrowed the, the some pictures, signed them out, you know. But it was for another publication, so I had to return them. Uh, back the next morning and? with an explanation. Ah. It's like, how, you know, why are you doing a caricature? It's not for us. Why are you doing a caricature of Rupert? Apparently it's not not a nice thing to do to your boss oh, okay. to do a caricature of uh, Unauthorised uh, source material. Hmm. No, it was authorised. I signed it out. Okay. I have access to... This is back in the time before, you know, when they were transitioning from, from analogue to digital. Look, I'm a, I think that's it. a bit piss poor. If you're going to get stuck in a uh, Rupert, you can do better than that. God. What do you mean, get what, stuck in What into a story. Huh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we're so going to use gonna this. Get we're going to get stuck into Rupert. We're going to use this. We're not going to get stuck into Rupert. We're not going to use this today. What are we doing with that? I don't know. You, you always. I want to get a different colour. Oh. Well, that's a horse of so, a different colour, that okay. is. Okay. The idea of caricatures, sometimes caricatures are. Um, Wanton destruction of property. Uh, in, in which case, you, you push and pull like this, right? You push and pull the forms until they're no longer recognisable. 
and uh, you play with them and things like that. And then other times you have a shape, you're presented with a shape where it's actually quite uh, a compact. So the little, a lot of the features on Mark's face are very compact. I've just actually noticed that the glasses were in the wrong sort of perspective line. Uh, I may need to, uh, I might need to rub that out. But the uh, the basic forms of the hair of the uh, of the figure are this sort of peanut shape, right? We've got a lot of emphasis Orvid. on his head. What do you call it? Ovid. Ovoid. Ovoid. Yeah. yeah. So aren't OFO. Su- aren't you ovoid supposed to object. avoid the ovoid? That's it. You're supposed to avoid ovoids. Yeah. Any kind of ovoids you're supposed to um, get rid of. I'm going to t- do a... Um, I'm not doing a kitchen light on his head, but I'm going to have a little curved uh, reflection from... It's actually a... I think it's a one of these uh, f- uh, flat lights that I've uh, carted into his office. Um, yeah, that's his office. Here's... Yeah. Yep, here's... Uh, He's got an original Banksy shirt on. Yes, he does. He has um, half, of, you know, half of the face is obviously in shadow. The light source is coming down from the left, so you've got a shaded, shaded area on the forms of the face, right? So trying to create a three-dimensional prospect, a three-dimensional concept of a uh, caricatured uh, Mark Knight portrait. So I'm not going too far out, but I'm, I am looking for um, lines that explain certain characteristics. There's a beautiful... Uh, in these photographs, I took a series of these photographs. Uh, actually, this is from a video of him talking. So it's in motion. Get to move it in the camera. Yeah. So it's in motion, right? So I took a few of them. Uh, the one that I like, because he favours his uh, right eyebrow... It's got this Mr. Spock look, so he kind of very critical eye. Uh, he does have a critical eye. It's almost like there's a, there's a telescope or a monocle on that eye. In the olden days, he'd have a monocle. Probably you have a big mustache as well. You have a monocle and they kind of look at you like this with I, a raised eyebrow I like Mr. Car- Spock. I don't think That's cartoon- illogical. I don't illogical, think, I say. I don't think cartoonists wore monocles. <laughs> pretty sure come, they did. How'd they come up with uh, uh, Mr. Moneybags for... Um, we got to talk about Mr. Moneybags one day from Monopoly because that guy. Oh, did that the, Mr. Moneybags. Yeah, because oh. the cartoonist invented it, didn't get paid. That's right. And but but he was scandalous. The phrase Mr. Moneybags was older than the the. Um, it is. The it game. comes from the uh, oh, Victorian back. era. Yes. Yeah, well, it goes back to. I mean, they used to call the the Moneybags. They used to call him Fat because he was big. Yeah. Um, Will Dyson invented a character called Fat. Mm. In England, when he was working in England, it was a character called Fat. Wow. Okay, didn't know that. So um, the idea that we're trying to create—I don't know why I've got this. I'm playing with this rather than yeah. drawing. Yeah, get back to so, the drawing. Come on. <laughs> That's my <laughs> my caricature mark. Um, no, it's not. Come on, get back to the drawing. We'll go back and uh, get we'll stuck into this. It. So there's a lot of stuff going on in your head Come when on. you're doing a caricature. Talk about the pencils. Come on. Well, I want to talk about the T zone. So the T zone oh, is this area of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, right? That's where we're concentrating effort in order to get a um, uh, and the glasses. You've got to get that right. Yeah, and the and the mouth. So we're concentrating an effort into this. Now these three, th- these four things build up a dialogue between each other, right? So Would it's it be more relations between the the eyes and the nose and the mouth? Now that relation may or may not be tied to proportions. Okay, it may be tied to details and subtle variant lines that lead in and out because most of the expression in a face is around these. This, all the muscles of the face, where's that book? All the muscles, of, look at all these. All these muscles, look at all the, the, the intricate lace work of muscles that create this amazing um, um, machine of the face. It is, it is a machine that is, has infinite animated possibilities. So animated in the sense of giving life. So life, uh, uh, living possibilities of expressions, micro-expressions which come from thoughts and feelings in the head. They reflect in the face 
much like the the rivulets of rainwater that uh, creates the, one day the Grand Canyon. The rivulets of rainwater. Yes. Now, hang on. Before so you if you get leave carried, Mark Knight's head out in the no, okay, in the so rain, so it will create. So this T zone. Yeah. Uh, what about ratio? If you take the ratio away. Horatio. So, no, no, ratio. The right. ratio, the distances between these. Right. Does that affect it? <clears throat> it may or may not. Ah. It's, that's the dialogue you have to find. Ah, okay. So the dialogue is a give and take thing. It's a Horatio. Okay, Horatio. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you Horatio onto the drawing and do some drawing in there? Right. So I've started on this. I've got a, a I think, a, a little bit of a head start, but I might lose ground. Because there's, uh, as I said to you before, we're building up a relationship. I've already seen this out. I've already noticed that this is a little bit of out of alignment, which is um, is slang for um, it ain't <laughs> it ain't working. Well, one eye is lower than the other. No, the the distance. See, there's a there's a line that goes through the head. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And Sandy. the distance between the eyes have to be equivalent they have to be the same yeah. so even when you've got a three quarter view or a slightly turned view of the head you've got to keep perspective in mind mm. so there's a lot of stuff to think about you know um, in drawing a face and drawing a caricature a caricature is just like the rules are out of uh, you know you've moved the goalposts in the game um, you're just really playing with uh, with the uh, ratios, toy, with it, yeah, yes, playing with a ratio, yeah. and um, and 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 having fun with shapes and the spaces between the shapes. And what's the number one rule of um, drawing? Well, you have to entertain yourself, so you have to have fun. Fun. The motivation for this is not money. It's not glory. It's not nothing. It's, Except fun. It's, it's not nothing. Okay. It's, it's not nothing. It's uh, fun. It's, okay. It's fun. So if it wasn't fun, um, don't do it. Um, you have to really be motivated and and un, and um, unfettered in your uh, in your approach. So you've you've met Mark <coughs> a few times. Um, yeah. You're going to ask this question, does it help knowing the person? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that um, um, as opposed to looking at the, at the, the source material, yeah. I mean, you took the photo yourself. <clears throat> Do you remember it? Can I draw him no, from no, my I mean, memory? Is there, can, you, can you qualify, can you put it in percentage of how much, how important it is to see the person in the, in the round as, a, as opposed to photos? Well, working in the newspapers, you get to do politicians, which you don't meet in the round. Yeah, but you also see them on television. Yeah, but it's And they not... turn their heads and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but who watches really politicians oh, go, on TV? I mean, you've got go better things to do than, than yeah. hang out in the news. Yeah. Yuck. Well, I mean, look, if you're a political cartoonist, I mm. mean, Mark talks about this, if you're a political cartoonist, mm. you've got the soup on all the time, you know? You've got the radio on, you've got the papers... You, you're continually plugged into the system because... Um, well, they have to. This, yeah, yeah, they have to. And, of course, when, I didn't, he, when I he goes on holidays, part. his brain is still boiling away there, even though he's away yeah, from... Yeah. And if he goes away for three weeks, well, it means the first week is a complete waste of time because he's still thinking mentally about everything that's happening. It's hard And to then the middle it week, he actually has a holiday, and then he starts, oh, I've got to get back into the soup again. Mm. So um, the, the last week of the holiday is lost... Because he's, he's got to get back into the stirrups again and think about it. And he's got all these things he has to uh, mix in. Well, know? people don't realise what's involved in this. It's not a simple matter. You know, I mean, cartoonists are really... It's not more than the picture. They've got to actually tell a story and that story has to be, um, you know, relevant to the, to the, to the time, well, to I the think, picture. Well, I think, I think Mark sets the bar pretty high because... Um, uh, Mark has a, a very unlike, good sense of fun. Yeah, but unlike unlike a lot of cartoonists, mm. um, uh, who was it? When he does a cartoon, yeah. it's on the pulse. It's almost like the, the latest story, the, the latest thing that's just happened. It's on the pulse, mm. and he tries to give yeah, the viewer, to... the man on the street, what they think about what's actually happening. 
So yeah. he doesn't do the big... What's the cow that he draws, the pig dog? It's a pig dog, yeah. Right. Well, it looks, yeah. well, it's a great device because it allows him to put a gag, a gag in there that he can't. Where does that idea come from? Is that... uh, a lot of cartoonists use it. Um, yeah, I know. Um, uh, Rigby. Rigby, Benia. Um, yeah, all sorts of people. Um, didn't um, Benia have a little um, beret on, on, on that character? Yeah. He had a little beret. It was like a little version of him <laughs> in the corner. It was a little him. The everyman, and he's Ma the everyman. Mark's from, Mark's from um, Sydney, and he mm. might have actually decided to use it because Benny did, I don't know. But it's, it's, a, good a, it's idea. a great idea because it actually gives... Constancy. You an, extra, an extra comment that, yeah. um, that you, you know, like, you might... It's an Easter egg. You might work out, yeah, you might work out six gags or three gags, yeah. and you can only use one of them. Yeah. But, oh, I'd love to use that one, so put it in the mouth of the pig dog in the corner. And sometimes... Mm. It, the pig dog just looks, mm. you know. Which is funny. Although it would be itself. good to see if Mark actually explained and did a whole visual story where the pig dog came from because um, it's got a pig's nose but it's still a little dog, you know. Mm. Anyway, getting back to Mark, uh, he, sets the mark uh, he sets the bar high because mm. he, he tries to... I've always said this about him and people like Mick Armstrong... Um, mm. He might have a, a, a strong view on a particular subject mm. and then that subject comes up and he's about to do the cartoon and something else will happen mm. and he'll go for that something else because he just sees it more important. It's on the pulse. He always follows the pulse of, of what's happening. Mm. And if the pulse has changed, he'll change with it, you know. But it's also the cast... Of, um, I mean, sometimes he'll come up with... Uh, did he come up with the... Elizabeth to, uh, one reference to um, um, Gillard, or was that someone else? Because he might have. He used he, it. He might have. Yeah. He might have. And that's the sort he, of. Well, he he used the motive, but you know, Queen Elizabeth the first. You mean? Yeah. Uh, he, Queen he, Bess. Yeah. He he did it um, a lot. Old Bessie. Yeah, and especially with the the head chopping bits with um, yeah the leadership. But the other thing about Mark, as you said, he's very funny. Yeah. And the other thing about him for a political cartoonist is that mm. most political cartoonists, did, um, you know what their politics are. Mm. And you're not, you're not quite sure about um, Mark because no. he gets stuck in everybody. Mm. And he gets stuck in everybody the same way, mm. like boots and all, you know. Mm. But he's funny. He he's is. He's funny. And um, it's taken him a long time. Like, for instance, when I first started collecting cartoons about 40 years ago... Yeah. Um, I thought there were about three or four knights coming out of Sydney. Uh, different cartoons called Knight because, like, for instance, there, with there different were a couple of Mitchells and... around. There was a Mitchell what was in that? Western Australia. There was one in Sydney. There was one in um, Gold Coast. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just one of those things, you know, where cartoons have the same name. Why was that? Because it was well, so prolific. No, or... because Mark was sort of hadn't found his um, hadn't found his niche, you know. His style. And he tried, uh, you know, he, he tried lots of different styles. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of The who style was. in art is a distinctive quality that's particular to the creator. Um, it's more than the... It's, uh, it could be related to the use of materials. It could be related to the, you know, an, o an oeuvre, like a... Like a a movement. Oeuvre. Mm. Oeuvre, okay. Could be related to a movement. Are you actually pronouncing like that right? I'm an oeuvre. Sounds slightly naughty. You know. Oeuvre. Oeuvre. Anyway, um, so like he was influenced, he's influenced like everybody. He's influenced by Crumb, he's influenced by Oliphant, he's influenced by, uh, uh, what's his name, not Scarf, um, the other guy. Um, Stedman. Stedman. He's influenced by Stedman. Um, yeah, so, but he's now found, fully found his uh, feet and his style is his. Yeah. And, um, um, and we always get a lot of drawing. He doesn't simplify his drawings. Um, he, you know, you, you get your pound of, um, of, of uh, pencil with him. Pound of? Yeah, he does a lot of drawing. Okay. This and he puts half lots a, of... He puts it's half a Shakespeare. <laughs> Half reference. a Shakespeare. Yeah. Half a Shakespeare reference. Yeah. The pound of pencil. The yeah, pound of pencil, yeah. The pound of lead. Although, um, 
Yeah, um, and he puts lots of gags in there. Mm. And, um, and, of course... Um, and he uh, references uh, pop culture. Which all is the nice. time. All the time. It's a nice thing to do. I used to do that. Uh, I'd squeeze in <laughs> really weird shit, like... Uh, um, oh, we're told not to use explicit words. Yeah, stop swearing. Stop swearing. Stop what are swearing. you, from Sydney? Huh. Um, yeah, I used to um, squeeze in things like, you know, from Ren and Stimpy and stuff. Yeah, well, that's a... Yeah, I mean, Just they're adorable. fantastic, but mm. still... Um, Energy! Would you sit your... Danger! Would you sit your second and, or, or two-year-old grandson down to watch Ren and Stimpy? Uh, I you? did. You did? Oh, OK. My yeah. kids were late to school because of... Uh, I had to watch Powdered Toast Man. Really? Yeah, I had to. And, and they suffered because of you. Well, they... Actually, that was the excuse. They Why are you late to school? My dad had to watch Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. And they say, who's your dad? And they say, oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, OK. Yeah. Well, Ma- they, knew make allowances. They, they knew that I was... Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot of... Uh, Anyway, getting getting back to Mark, it's pretty hard to to follow the the especially today because I mean they used to say a week is a long time in politics. Well, all that's been thrown out because of um, uh, the um, the different media we have today, um, and like five minutes is a long time in politics today. So um, Mark's actually his job's even harder, and plus I mm. think the the deadlines are even earlier. Mm. Um, because of the printing process and stuff. So I think he has to have his cartoon done by... It used to be 9 o'clock, I think, at mm. night, but um, then it sort of moved on. Um, back, I should say, back to 6 and things like that. Yeah. So he's under the pump a lot. And the thing is, of all the cartoonists in this country, he produces a cartoon every day. Mm. Every day. And so he's really he's really uh, welded to that um, to that process. Got printer's ink in his blood. Yeah. And speaking of his blood, we'll talk about his mother. Um, Now, um, his mother liked his drawings and she was convinced that, you know, her son was the best artist in the future Mm -hmm. going. So the story is, I'll probably get it wrong and Mark will kill me, but uh, his mum dragged him into um, the the newspaper... And he saw um, the meter cartoonist, and he saw um, oh, what's he? Uh, Rafty. Rafty. Tony Rafty. And of course, Tony Rafty's a, um, was a ladies' man to say the least. Mm-hmm. And of course, obviously, Mrs. Uh, Knight's a good looker. Mm-hmm. So he he um, he decided to give the boy a bit more look time than he normally would have. I see. And. Um, Anyway, we so be I, I, I about think it became. This? It I sounds think, very personal now. No, no, no. I'm just saying. So, um, Mark actually, I think he got a cadetship out of it. Right. Yeah, and so he, he you know, because it's hard to get a job in the papers, you know. Yeah. Pretty hard, you know. So he had his mum behind him. Mm. Um, and of course, he um, his dad liked cars, so he was always drawing cars for his dad. Mm. And um, Mark and John Spooner did a book. Oh, a couple of years ago, about the the, the death. decline of the car industry. Yeah, um, in Australia. Yeah, it was a good little book, yeah. um, and they, it's mostly full of cartoons. Mm. And um, Mark Mark um, did some really good cartoons about you touch my car like the Holden, you know, you touch my car. And his his understanding of of, of rev heads is you can't um, have the Kingswood. Is, yeah, I've just shampooed the. Fan belt. <laughs> That's an old joke. What's that? Nearly 30 years old, isn't it? I don't know. Who was his... Oh, what was Ross somebody? What was he? Not the Kingswood. Yeah. Ross, what's his name? He did all those ads on Sydney um, radio. Mm, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, Mark, did some wonderful... <laughs> I didn't watch it. Well, bits of it. What, you watch the radio? Bits of it. Typical. It's, I, yeah, it's watching not the so radio. F- yeah. There's a lot of film uh, shows, Australian shows, that I just didn't get. Not the Kingswood. Watch. You can't borrow the Kingswood. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Mark did these great drawings of, of Holden's and stuff. Mm. And um, he did some cartoons about the, the effects of uh, um, having um, Japanese cars for the, um, for the car races, mm. you know. And have to go put 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 instead of oh, vroom vroom vroom, God. you know. Yeah. And Mark's um, 
whether he's a rev head or not, he, mm. he understands rev heads and he Pet, petrol head. Yeah, mm. he you know so um, and he's a fan of football and of course well, every chance he gets mm. he'll whack in a football um, reference reference mm. or, or metaphor and it doesn't matter um, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, about politics or what he'll he'll still put the the, the reference in there and he's done some incredible things with um, with Trump. Mm. Uh, round about the Melbourne Cup, he's got um, uh, round about that time. He's got a drawing of um, Trump as the rear end of a horse, and mm. it's called cool. it's doing poo all over the ground, and it's coming out of uh, Trump's mouth, and the blokes all clearing it all up. I think that was two days before the the Melbourne Cup, right? Or the day before, because um, Trump was going berserk somewhere on the other side of the world, right? Yeah, so you had to throw in a Melbourne Cup reference. Oh, I can see, so, I can see the mic uh, the, in the source material. You've got a um, you've got a microphone onto his T-shirt. You're obviously interviewing him. Yeah. Yeah, when you took that photo. That, that's from a film. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, but do you notice that that behind him, right behind him, is, is the, the the Sydney Swans um, poster. Yeah. Yes, when they won the grand final. Mm. Typical. Yeah, it is typical. They typical. keep winning the grand final. No, they don't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they don't. Then what's typical? Well, it's typical. He's a fan, and so he, he said, "Look, take me a photograph here." So he, he's promoting his team at the same time. Right. Yeah. So. Um, and of course, every man um, when they pick up, like it's like Jeff Hook. Mm. Uh, in Melbourne, everybody used to go looking for the Jeff Hook, mm. um, the, the hook every day that he secreted in his um, uh, drawings. Yeah. And, of course, it was a pretty good move because um, most people just look at the cartoon for about three seconds and that's it. Mm. But um, because they're looking for the hook, they actually scan the whole drawing and they're taking in all this detail yeah, brush G strokes, Jeff and pen did strokes, unconsciously. And I know. And over a period clever. of time, that all builds up. So mm. people love, they loved his drawing. They loved Jeff's drawing, you know. Mm. And Mark doesn't hide hooks, but you know he has he has detail. He has little scattered gags, like the other day did a cartoon about um, uh, the kids going back from um, uh, going back to school mm. from the lockdown, and the kids are all walking off, um, looking at their phones waving over their shoulder to their mum at the door. And of course, these bits of pizza and pillows and shoes and mess and the table's got cut out bits of paper and um, yeah. there's a basketball there, there's a, there's a football on the floor. Yeah. Um, it's, all, it's all domestic bliss there, you know? Domestic bliss. And, and you spend, yeah. oh, you probably spend a minute or so just looking at that, all those details, mm. you know? And it's great because He's telling the story, yeah. as, as you always say. He's telling the story, and he's giving you enough detail to tell you more than a short story. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's it's you know it's a story. It's like a, a topics that affect us all in some some way, so we all can sort of um, commiserate with the uh, the poor characters in the cartoon. Mm. And it gets back to his humour because he is very funny and I'm pretty sure that um, a lot of people think that um, Mark's virtually telling, uh, doing the cartoon just for them because um, he's very popular. He's really, he's really plugged into the popular pulse. Yep. Big time, big time. And that's 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 a lot of work. That's it is a lot, a lot of that's work. That's a lot of work. Yeah. It's not a not a it's not a straightforward illustration job. It's a lot of no, training. No, but he, he has done paintings. Yeah. He's I've seen. I haven't seen the originals, but he's done wrestlers. Oh. And big paintings of wrestlers, big meaty guys. And he he's done a couple of. Um, I just know that. Large works. He was doing one. I think on the, on horse racing, yeah, for somewhere. And I love his um, Melbourne Cup stuff. He 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 really like, 
it gets back to my theory about like because he's from Sydney, um, and like Jeff Hook was from Tasmania, when they come to Melbourne, they see things that the average person don't because they're they've grown up with them and they're just invisible to them, you know. Mm. So um, Mark always does wonderful cartoons about the Brownlow, and it's always not about who's going to win the football; it's all about the girls uh, who's going to look the prettiest at the brand loan. He always has them in, in, the, in the, the powder puff room all lifting their dresses and painting their lips and all that sort of stuff. It's very funny. Mm. And during the, um, the races, uh, he loves horses, by the way. I think he's yeah, actually yeah. got he a does. couple. Yeah. Or he trains them or something. No, and, you um, can tell. The... Yeah, his horses are really interesting. We were, um, we were talking about last year, I think, we were talking about one of the artists uh, who did... Um, Famous cartoonist who used to do animals really well. Remember who that was? In People magazine, perhaps? or Australian? Yeah. Uh, it'd be Sid Miller. No. Sid Miller did wonderful drawings of animals. No, we did a... a we did a Sid uh, Miller didn't do stuff for the... He was... Um, in Aboriginal women and things. Oh, um... Okay, go Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Senior moment number 4,258. Um, yeah. Um, well, he did He did bush dogs and stuff like that, the guy you're talking about. Um, yeah, but he did beautiful horses. Yeah, he did, yeah. But but Mark does racehorses. Yeah. yeah. He does racehorses. And um, uh, I love his, um, his drawings because he, he incorporates the horse with the the fashion stakes mm. and he has horses standing on their back legs wearing hats and fascinators and all that sort of stuff and it's very funny mm. very funny um, th to see a horse stand on its on its back legs and look quite normal yeah, you have to know your anatomy horse anatomy yeah, you've got to know to your break horses. those rules that's a very he knows his horses yeah so I was yeah. talking to my students a few weeks ago about that anthropomorphic um, uh, drawing of of Animals, you know, the mixing of animals and humans, or, or drawing human traits onto animals, which is part of. I mean, we do that, don't we? We, we think of our pets as people, mm. and uh, um, but it really, in order to draw them and design them and have them look um, correct, it's quite a, a task. You really do need to know your um, animal anatomy. And you need to know your human anatomy because yeah. you know what, then what to replace with what and make it look like it works. He, he also he also likes Leonardo da Vinci, as, yep. as we all do, and he's always uh, well not always but he's he's forever waiting for an example to stick a, a, like a da Vinci like um, reference reference in his pictures. Yep, and um, I've always said he uh, like who was it was it. Um, was it Stedman who did a book on... He did a book on Da Vinci, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And he also did a book on Freud. But I always thought that um, Australia should have a book on Da Vinci by Mark Knight. You yeah. never know. We might get one one day. Well, Leonardo Da Vinci and other great Australians. It sounds like yes. a nice... Yes, another great Australian. Nice uh, book. Yeah. Other great Australians like Leonardo Da Vinci. Um... I mean, we, we adopt Russell Crowe. Why not Leonardo da Vinci? Why not go all out? Just reach over the water. We, we adopt everybody. Cherry pick from Europe. We, we adopt everybody. I know. We adopt Actually, everybody. I think Shakespeare and Leonardo da Vinci belong to everybody. Yeah. Well, we, we'll take pride. They're in, out of copyright. We'll put them in pride of place. Yeah, they're out of copyright. Right in our pantheon of Aussie gold. Yeah, and a couple of years ago... Um, um, uh, they produced a book of Mark Knight's drawings, yep. and it was a wonderful book. Mm. Wonderful. Um, he's got photographs of his table with all the mess, and uh, sketches and mm. things like that. And he's, uh, um, the the trouble is the bulk of the cartoon in the book are political, and of course, you know, um, politics uh, changes. That's like right. The, wind, and, and the winds people, have changed. Pe people have very bad memories when it comes to politics. Otherwise. Yeah. But I really Otherwise did. Otherwise, they would have booted him out long ago. You I know? very much enjoyed Julia, his Julia drawings. I thought they had a lot of. Um, um, well, the thing is, um, the thing is, yes, um, 
They all got stuck into Julia. I, I think yeah. she caught more flack than any other prime minister in, in living memory, actually. Yeah, for, because she's a woman. That's right. You know, and then they How could, dare you be a prime minister in Australia? Yeah, but he gave woman. her a bit of gravitas by, by turning her into a, a Elizabeth I. I know. Yeah. And uh, it made me um, warm to her as a, uh, as a person, I think, because now I'm seeing her through um, some uh, weird historical lens. Mm. And uh, it just made more... It, it made complete sense to me. Complete sense. Made her more interesting as a, as a politician. Well, I think, I think um, they, they always try to grab the metaphor that sort of suits what they see the person as. Yeah, but it just even even more than a metaphor. Yeah. It was just so apt. It just fits, you know, redhead, famous redhead, Queen, Vic, Queen Elizabeth I, um, Julie Gillard. You know, it just, it just suited her. And even the way that he'd, he'd like her, her beautiful, she's got a fantastic uh, nose, beautiful profile and it's just everything's balanced the, the, the nose the nose stuck out in in one end and then they had this uh you know the collar the collar yeah, yeah. and the the ruffles and then this beautiful big bum the dress with the bum that stuck out and it kind of had this beautiful s- swan-like s swan-like esque yeah it was I'll, just I'll, magnificent yeah okay i um, loved it yeah. Okay. Um, I've recently um, scanned a lot of his work. Um, uh, he he did on um, Jeff Kennett when Jeff Kennett was the Premier of Victoria, mm. and he did wonderful things. He 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 turned him as an electricity tower mm. and uh, as a, as a, as a chook, as a rooster, you mm. know, going berserk. Um, and I think. Um, between him and Spooner, they, they completely <laughs> drained all the possible metaphors <laughs> that they're, they're in um, um, they're in their um, their uh, what's the word armory mm. their political their cartoonist armory. Yeah. Well, when you have that ability, I mean, Jeff Kennett is a standalone, you know, because of his personality. Yeah. And hairdo and and yeah. his little eyes and the things. <laughs> You've got things to pick on, exaggerate. We should draw Jeff Kennett. Jeff Kennett would be great as a subject, you know, just to sort well, of Well, they all loved his hair, and now he's got really short hair. Yeah. And, like, like, you know, he, he looks like he looks like a character out of The Ghost of the Civil Dead, which is an Australian semi-documentary about prison life. Have you ever seen that film? No. You're into horror films? It's a real scary doco. Is it? Yeah, semi-doco. Right. Made about thirty years ago. Is he like the freak from? Um, no, 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 no. It was just very Rachel. short hair and lots of tats and stuff. That's another thing. Mark always covers his um, players with tats. Yep. And I, I think he loves getting stuck into the Collingwood. I had cheers, that conversation with um, Paul about tattoos. Actually, he's got a. There's there's an issue with tattoos. Uh, Paul Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to keep up to date oh, with the tattoos because tattoos are like a living yeah, art form. That's right. They keep bloody growing. Yeah. And which means that you've got to keep up to date with your uh, reference material. Yeah. And know what's going on. So you've got to keep a handle on, on all that stuff. Um, Aina is uh, my um, my my secretary, and mm. she's an elderly lady. She's. Um, She's 82, mm. and she does a lot of computer work for me. And um, every so often I'll show her that picture that Mark did when um, Eddie, uh, um, Eddie Everywhere, the, Eddie the, Maguire. the president of Collingwood, yep. turned 50. Yeah. They had a photograph, uh, a, a Mark Knight cartoon of him smiling mm. and big teeth, you know. And you've got all the, um, the, the whole picture's full of uh, Collingwood uh, cheer squad with no teeth. With well, they've got one tooth, each one tooth, or whatever, and um, they're all singing "Happy Birthday." And of course, <laughs> the little pig dog says that uh, Eddie's got more teeth than the whole of the um, mm. the the choir, yeah, uh, so to speak. Um, and every time I show that to Aina, and that that cartoon now must be well, I don't know, must be ten years old. Mm. She just laughs her head off every time. It's just as fresh as it was drawn, you know. Wow. 
And it is funny. That's the thing about the humour, because if there's not enough humour in the cartoon, you can retain some memory of what actually went down politically. Mm. But if there's no, not enough humour, it doesn't help. I think humour sort of unlocks the memory a bit better mm. when, when you're going through old cartoons, you know? Mm. Why is that? I don't know. I think humour lasts longer than the issue. I don't know. It, well, same. it's like, I mean, teachers will tell you this. Because, if, you, if know, you tell a joke, the... If you tell a joke... Um, the audience relaxes and then you can hit them with the hard stuff, you know, mm, and mm. it retains it. But um, you relax them. You're not, you're not lecturing to people. No. And, um, I mean, you know, um, every so often, Mark or most cartoonists will do a serious cartoon mm. uh, when someone dies and stuff. Like but Mark, and things. Yeah, but Mark always has humour in it. Mm. Like um, people have died and all that sort of stuff. Um, and he's got a picture of a... a, a, a um, a fireman leaning on a log, mm. offering his um, bottled water to a, a, a koala, you know? Mm. Which happened. Yeah, which happened. But um, um, he, he actually has the humour in the picture. It's not just the humanness, it's the humour as well. Mm. The, with the expressions yeah. and yeah. things like that, yeah. So there's an opportunity for um, and fun. And what I was talking about before, it'd be hard to pick his politics because he's obviously got politics. Mm. But um, uh, and people say, oh, because he works for Murdoch, he's obviously mm. a Murdoch man. But he's not. Mm. Mm. Um, he he goes after everybody. Mm. Um, but I'm saying that um, the only time I actually felt I, I really knew what, what what he cared about was he did a, a drawing of his dog, mm. and straight away I felt, and th that was a very popular cartoon because um, it resonated with a lot of people. Yes. And also another time when his house, I think it was in um, Black Friday fires. Yep. Um, his house was nearly, because he lives in Gippsland, mm -hmm. it, was nearly, um, it was nearly toast. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they were taking water out of the, the dam and the swimming pools in the area to, um, to put his house out. Wow. And, um, and he did a great cartoon where he thanks them, you know. Um, but most of the time he just gets stuck in everybody because, he, as I said, he's plugged into the... Um, the, the zeitgeist. The, yeah, the man on the street's sense of what's going down, mm. you know. Which There's, is really a mark of a, of a cartoonist. The cartoonist is supposed to do that. Yes. When they well, do they daily... I mean, historically they didn't. If you work for a right-wing No, paper, that's right, you toe the line. Yes, that's right. Oh, well, Left-wing, you know, you anarchist, mm. whatever, you know. The propaganda. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people think that Mark Knight's um, one of the most important pe um, people mm. in the whole of that newspaper. Yeah. Well, I never read the newspaper. And I, I just I, did two things, read his cartoon and did the... Jumble world word. Okay. No, there's no more jumble word. Yeah. There's no more jumble word. No, it took it out. Oh, tragedy, huh? Save money. Well, they're hemorrhaging, aren't they? They're sort he of, doesn't you know, have that much dark hair. Newspaper. I gave him dark hair. I'm doing him, the guy a favour. Are you? <laughs> he does have dark hair. The hair, little hair he has is dark hair. What do you mean, little hair is? <laughs> nice round poor, head poor, there. Poor Mark. Yeah. You're drawing you know, him like he's the, an accountant. Um, You're drawing him like he's an accountant, you know? Where's accountant? That, yeah, where's that free spirit? Where's that... Just because someone has glasses... Where's that radical? Where's that radical? Well, where's that imp impishness at, in the eyes? Come on, get the impishness in there, you know? I, uh, get the uh, naughtiness in the eyes. Okay. So what I'm doing here is just a level of contrast that I'm building up. Most of the tonal work is provided with the paper. Mm. The, you know, the tonal paper. So that does a lot of the um, heavy lifting as far as creating a tonal relationship or a half tone in which to start from... 
Let's see if I can put this line in here without stuffing it up. So yeah, the, that's the only reason why I would read the, a, a paper. Um, I've never really been big on reading newspapers. I've worked for them, but it's like, it's not really a thing for me. Well, what's it like in Sydney? Like, for instance... Um, well, you have the Telegraph. No, no but when you were a kid... Mm. Um, you were growing up. Yeah, were you interested in Benia or No, my mother would buy the papers and you'd read the Telegraph. She had there was a morning paper and an evening paper. Yeah, like Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, we had Telegraph in the morning and the Mirror in the afternoon. And the and and the um Daily Mirror. Yeah. And also but also the Herald. The Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah, yeah in the morning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So cuz she she was a gambler and she used to professional horse racing gambler if we could imagine it um, she lost like a fortune yeah but she bought your comics <laughs> yeah I c but imagine if she could win uh, occasionally oh I'd get better comics I would get books rather than just giving you books comics. a waste of time yeah there's well, just so picture many books. there's just so many gold star bo uh, comics books. you can buy isn't there you know so many gold star. Yeah, you like gold star. Um, so okay, you so you would look at the paper and you look at the comic strips. No, oh uh, yeah, occasionally you look at the comic so, strips. What about what about caricatures and, and illustrations? Brenda Star or something. You read that. But what about um, what about uh, uh, when I was a illustration kid, in the papers? There's there weren't illustration. really illustrations in the papers yes, so much. But, yeah, well, the, when I was a I kid. know they were dying out, but there were still illustrations. Mm. Fashion, fashion spreads and all. Oh, that stuff. advertising, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd look at the ads, you know, the paint, the painted shirt ads for for Mark Foy's or whatever. I, I don't know what it was like in Sydney, but I know that a cartoonist like um, um, Emil Mercer was really, really popular. Mm. People loved his stuff. They, you know, they check it out every day. Whether the you do realize that I was a kid. What yeah, the hell did you, you kids probably do weren't even, in the bloody you weren't newspaper? Even born, but I'm, what I'm, well, my point is getting back to my point. Really, is about Melbourne. Mm. How with people like Wegg and and Jeff Hook. Yeah, well, you um, had it. Lucky. You were lucky with that sort of culture. People loved love that their, supported cartoons. Well, yeah. The I mean, Wegg, Wegg represented football and everything yeah. else. And, and Jeff uh, r represented the man on the street. Look, I might get like into the man trouble the, he, that you know people were saying, "What about this guy? What about that guy?" No, but Jeff, Jeff, re but you know, I'm Jeff, really just talking about <coughs> my experience of cartoons. Yeah, but okay, but I'm I'm getting about I'm trying to get back to, to this guy. Um, yeah. So he comes down to Melbourne, and there's this big tradition of um, people loving their 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 afternoon and their morning um, cartoonists. Yeah. You know. And then you've got all the people over at the Age, which was the Sydney Morning Herald version. Yeah. Um, and they had oh, they had the best cut. They had the greatest amount of cartoonists uh, working um, of any paper in Australia at one stage, except for the uh, the Smiths Weekly. Right. And uh, if you want the heavy hitters, the heavy political hitters, you'd go to the Age, you know. Mm. But the man on the street preferred the Sun, you know. Right. And the Herald. And that's where um, Mark Knight came down. He, he, he actually, he got... I'm, I can't remember where he worked for in Sydney, but he got the job as a financial review. Mm. And that newspaper has a tradition of being really mm. um, getting stuck into people. It's got a... Most of the cartoons are about uh, the economy mm. and about, you know, going where, following where the money goes. Well, I just... But they were savage. They had a savage uh, quality, that paper that... The other papers didn't. Well, I, when I was working there, it was, it was almost like uh, you do a caricature of somebody, a businessman for yeah. the Finn Review, and the next week they're in jail. Oh. So it's like one week they're a hero, and the next week, uh, 
You know, and that that happened a lot. Did, did that make you feel like you know you helped? I didn't in help. the process. I didn't do it. It's not my. <laughs> anyway, fault. so so when Mark actually got a job at the finance review, he obviously had to sharpen up his pens and pencils a lot, a lot sharper, I suspect. Um, and um, oh, he did some really funny stuff. Um, yeah. Especially, uh, I remember things he did about Gallipoli when they were going back to Gallipoli, the old blokes, and he did some very funny cartoons about that. Um, there's um, uh, the, the, the Peter Weir film, uh, Gallipoli, or the, as the Americans call it, Gallipoli, um, sort of uh, led a, uh, a resurgence into um, the Anzac uh, legend. Mm -hmm. And he's got a cartoon of this Australian soldier jumping up out of the um, trench, the trench, holding up a sword a bayonet. and saying, for Australia, Peter Weir and the Australian film industry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, as I mentioned... Um, What's well, uh, the national it, sport in many regards? Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that he... So then the he Anzacs gets a job at the, the Herald. Industry. Then he gets a job at the Herald where he did all sorts of stuff. He did... Mm. Uh, um, cartoons that went right across from one side of the broadsheet size, so they're large, mm. and they have a cartoon going from one side to the other. I remember he did a drawing of two kids um, squeezing um, Father Christmas, mm. twisting him and draining him of all the presents. And um, the, I think those were the days when he was really interested in, uh, influenced by uh, Stedman. Mm. And did those sort of uh, sketches. I don't remember these, I've never no, seen them. No, they were in the Herald. You're in Sydney still. Mm. These these are quite a while ago, and yeah. then um, the Herald joined with the the Sun, so because evening newspapers dropped out, mm. so they joined together, um, and for a while um, the Herald Sun had um, two cartoonists. They had uh, Jeff Hook still working for them and Mark. So um, uh, th there were two cartoons in the paper. Mm. And sometimes, because of the changing of the news and all that sort of stuff, they, they, they had to draw another one. So sometimes you had three cartoons in, 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 in a day, you know, or even four. Um, <clears throat> and it was hard because I was trying to collect them all, um, try, trying to keep up with what the but situation was. But aren't they in was. the same paper? And why was it hard? Oh, well, you see, the, 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 the afternoon paper used to have... Um, Early edition, home edition, and oh, I had yeah. last race and first race and all that sort of stuff. They keep keep on putting out editions, you know. Yeah. But n now, now people get all this stuff from um, television and uh, other sources. Yeah. Facebook. Well, television used to get their news from the papers. Yeah. Well, the radio yeah. used to get their news from the papers. Yeah, and television still does. Yeah. Because, and, and so does radio. Because it's old old news. Well, yeah, yeah. They don't have updates. It's not like it's live. But technology changed all that because now newspapers are all slow. Mm. You know, they're the slow ones. Yep, that's true. That's what happens. Technology moves on. The world moves on. Um... I don't know what more I can do with this. It's some, I'd like to get some nice reflections in the glass, but I think that might be a bit distracting. He's a very um, interesting man. He's like a, you know, he has um, he has obviously you know very strong uh, uh, focal point, and retains a lot of information. Uh, in his drawings and reflects a lot of uh, serious like uh, study and refers back to that continually in other cartoons yeah yeah very interesting um, visual well, play play on um, he's one puns and themes yeah, and he's one cartoonist of the year quite a few times yeah and he deserves it I mean um, um, mm. John Spooner said he's the best cartoonist working in Australia mm. on, on quite a few occasions. Yep. Um, there's, a, there's a deep reservoir of experience and ideas that he can, um, he can dip into. But there's also a sense of fun, and he's got that uh, yes. in spades. So yes. you, know, in you, spades. you need to have that, 
sense of humor. Otherwise, the, you know, I don't think your, I don't think it, it would it would have staying power. I think it's very Australian because um, mm. Australians don't like their 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 politics to be too um, serious. Serious, that's right. And Mark knows that. Yeah, you want to humanise the situation yeah, as much yeah. as you can, you know, because it's it just makes it a little bit more um, easy to digest these horrible people's uh, behaviour. Well, like he draws um, um, Scott Morrison, our latest prime minister, mm. as uh, is he still? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very funny. Um, as Churchill and all sorts of people, but he's yep. he's got a, a um, uh, out of his depth look, to, you know. Like he's not he's not really just he's not turning him into into a an evil monster or a mad scientist or something. Even if he was drawn as a mad scientist, Mark would have him with a sort of like out of his depth look. Yeah. Know? So he, he doesn't he doesn't go in for the kill. He doesn't he doesn't you know. Um, you know, um, he's not a killer Kowalski. Well, he, I mean, he, he, Bill Leake he wouldn't take prisoners; he'd just go for the juggler, you know. Yeah. But um, there's uh, he he, go, he goes for the funny bone, this bloke. That's right. He goes for the funny bone. Yeah, and that's and why we love hits him. It. it always hits it. Yeah, that's why we love him. Very interesting man. Very interesting cartoons. Very interesting work, and uh, you can tell that. Look at that Spock. Mr. Spock, it's like a, you know, uh, looking and questioning the world, um, mm. and uh, and the results in the in the work in the cartoons. So um, you want to do before and after? Before and after. Yeah. This is before the hair transfer. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on, come here, come here. And there's the. What's that? The that, swans. That's the swans, of course. Yeah, he has a beautiful. Um, Strength to his uh, football posters. Mm, mm. I love that line. I mean, you know, he's very, very interesting. Loves technique. Very studious. Very interesting work mm. and uh, style and the brain behind it all, of course. So um, that's it. That's for me. Um, this is Mark Knight. This is France Cantor, and I'm here with Jim Bridges. And we'll apparently, apparently, we're going to see you on the flip side tomorrow. The flip side. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.